Today, we're taking another look at the X-T5 from Fujifilm. What makes this camera so popular? Let's firstly take a look at the body and the form factor of this camera. So first of all, let's take off the front cap and reveal the sensor here. And looking at the body here, we can see it's quite different to most cameras we see on the market, especially today. We've got more of a retro feel here. This feels like it's fresh out of the 1970s, 80s. It's got a real nice feel to it. Great thing about it is everything is quite manual. And I think this is the main reason why people are so drawn to this camera. Aesthetically, it looks great. And when you're using it, because it is so manually based, there's so much more that you can do. There's so much more of a film feel that you get from this camera. So let's have a look at all, all the buttons that are on this camera that make it so unique. First of all, we can see down here, we have the single focus, continuous focus, and manual focus selector. That's not unique to Fujifilm, many other cameras have that, but it's quite cool to have that on a camera like this. So it feels a little bit more manual. Then we have some well, a button here to release the lens, a button here for customization, and then we have a little cap here for syncing a flash. Scroll wheel at the side here. And then when we look at the top of the camera now, let's move this around. This is where things get really interesting. Let's just focus this here for you. Exposure compensation here. And this is where we can adjust that completely. If you're not sure what exposure compensation is, it's where if you're using the auto method of the camera, where the camera's evaluating the light for you, you can change this to either bump that to shoot the camera brighter or for the camera to shoot darker automatically. Nice touch to have there right on the camera. So no diving into the settings, which is really great. And I think that's why a lot of people go for Fujifilm. We also have locked dials here as well. So you can press a button that pops up, allows us to move our dials. You press it back down, it locks it in place. So what dial do we have here? This dial here is the shutter speed. So we don't have to keep scrolling, even though we can, uh, we can just select our shutter speed for the day or our sync speed here, lock it in place, and that's what we're shooting for the whole day, similar to how film would work. Moving over to the next dial here, we have our ISO. Same again, lock button, and we can change that to all the different ISO values that we may need. Really handy, really selectable. Now, if you look again, just a little bit higher, we have these push dials here, left and right. And what that's doing is if we take a look at the front screen here, it's changing from HDR, single shoot, continuous low, continuous shooting high, bracket modes, some advanced modes, and panoramic. So that's all our functionalities there. And on the right side here, we have, we can shoot from stills, or we can switch it over to shoot into movie mode. So as you can see already, just going over these dials, it doesn't feel like we need to be diving in the menus so much. Maybe diving into the menus to change the type of video format we're shooting on, or what I'll show you right now, changing the film simulation. So let's switch this camera on and get you guys in focus here. So in the menu here, if we press the left dial here, it's a little bit of a, a tip for you. You can actually pull up the film simulation. So here are the film simulations that are in the X-T5. We have Provia Standard, it's ideal for a wide range of subjects. We have Velvia Vivid, it's vibrant reproduction, ideal for landscapes and nature. We have Astia Soft, it gives you a softer color and contrast for more subdued look. It's actually really nice for portraits actually. We have Classic Chrome, which is kind of street photographer's dream color. It's soft color and enhanced shadow contrast for a calm look. We have Pro Negative High, ideal for portraits with slightly enhanced contrast. Pro negative standard, it's a neutral tonality, best for editing images, ideal for portraits with a soft, soft gradation on skin tones. These guys, these guys are really going in. <laughs> Classic neg, enhanced color with hard tonality to increase image depth. Nostalgic neg, now this is kind of a newer one that you wouldn't have got on the X-T3 in those models. Uh, this is amber tinted highlights and a rich shadow tone for printed photo looks. Eterna, which is like the go-to cinema look for Fujifilm cameras and a lot of film cameras in the industry. And that gives you a soft color and a rich shadow tone, subtle for the movie look. And we've got Eterna Bleach Bypass. So if you're going for that kind of war, World War II kind of look, the Bleach Bypass is great for that. 
Then we have our Acros, which is our black and white, which is absolutely phenomenal from Fujifilm. Um, and then monochrome, which everyone's kind of used to. And of course, uh, oh, of course the battery's just running out on us. But what I will do now is just show you some images that have been taken using the Fujifilm sensor and how that turns out with no editing done whatsoever. This is just pictures straight out of the camera. So maybe if you are looking at the Fujifilm today, the X-T5 and wondering, well, why is it so different? Why do people like it so much? Maybe looking at this video today will help you. One last thing before we leave you with the photos, I'm just gonna show you what's underneath the ports here. So as you can see, we have a USB-C connector there for charging and for transferring data. We have a micro HDMI, in case you want to rig a monitor to this thing. We have a remote and we also have a microphone input. Bear in mind, we do not have a headphone socket on this unit. So if you are looking to use it for professional, single one band person recordings, then maybe moving over to X-H2, maybe the one for that kind of video work. But when it comes to photography, this thing is fantastic. And one more thing is the screen here. It moves out like so, and it also moves out like this. So it's not a fully articulating screen. You cannot do selfies with this. All right, hope you enjoyed it.